Namo Buddha, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. So today I am taking up uh, Middle Discourses 43. The title of the discourse is The Great Classification. Uh, this is a uh, just a warning before only. This is for me it's a heavyweight discourse uh, because a lot of very pointed and deep questions are asked in this discourse and uh, uh, which were replied by Venerable Sariputta and uh, uh, so I am just sharing whatever little I can share basis the little understanding that I have at this point uh, uh, as my understanding improves maybe I'll reshoot this video and bring in new insights but I request you to to do uh, to read this discourse at your end um, the link to the discourse is given in the description when you read the discourse at your end you'll get your own insights right and it doesn't matter about how much we can digest with the discourse definitely depending upon our spiritual level we will take what we can but somewhere a purification happens within us when we read uh, buddha's words or the words of his uh, uh, close disciples right so let me start right it's a long discourse so uh, but i'll read like the main 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 things right so so basically there there was a venerable mahakotitha who went to venerable sariputta and uh, then there was a Q and A kind of a uh, thing that started. So Venerable Sariputta was a was a arahant, was a fully enlightened one, right? So so he could answer the questions with. Otherwise, Buddha would have answered, right? So uh, Venerable Mahakotitha asked, Reverend, they speak of a witless person. How is a witless person defined? So definition of witless person. So uh, Venerable Sariputta asked, Reverend, they they are called witless witless because they don't understand. And what they don't understand? They don't understand that this is suffering, this is the origin of suffering, this is the cessation of suffering, and this is the practice that leads to the cessation of suffering, which is none other than the Four Noble Truths. So a person who is witless person doesn't understand the Four Noble Truths. And a wit wise person is the person who understands the Four Noble Truths. So that was defined. Then uh, uh, the question was that they speak of consciousness. How is consciousness defined? So Sari Venerable Sariputta said that it is called consciousness because it cognizes it is it is and what does it cognize it cognizes pleasure and pain and neutral it's called consciousness because it cognizes right so consciousness was defined then what is the difference wisdom and consciousness are they mixed and separate so venerable sariputta said they are they are mixed not separate you can never completely dissect them uh, so what is so the, he asked what is the difference between uh, these things the difference between these things is that wisdom should be developed while consciousness should be completely understood right so when we practice our meditation our past meditation we are basically understanding these various consciousnesses that are under that are arising at this moment and wisdom is developed wisdom is over time uh, through the regular practice of mindfulness we develop the wisdom that all of the three states of existence that everything is impermanent there is no self and there is this suffering beneath everything, right? So there is this difference. Then feeling, how is feeling defined? Uh, so Sariputta said, it's the feeling because it feels, right? What is perception? It is perception because it perceives, right? It When what does it perceive? It perceives blue, red, yellow, white. It's called perception. So, so where I am right now, uh, this subtle difference between consciousness Feelings, perception is a bit muddled at my end. I'll have to do more research on this. But for, for the sharing purpose, I'm sharing. And I will come back to you when I am more, you know, kind of wise in my understanding of these dif the differences between these uh, aggregates. Right? Okay. Okay, what is the purpose of wisdom? The purpose of wisdom is, I am not taking 100% everything because it's a very long discourse. So I am taking the main main things. What is the purpose of wisdom? The purpose of wisdom is direct knowledge, complete understanding and giving up. Right? Direct knowledge, complete understanding and giving up. Right? How many conditions are there for the arising of right view? There are two conditions for arising of right view. The words of another, which is basically the words of the Buddha and the Rational application of mind. Then the question was, when right view is supported by how many factors does it have the freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom? 
So Sariputta said, when right view is supported by five factors, what are the five factors? It's supported by ethics, learning, discussion, serenity, and discernment. How many states of existence? There are three states of existence in the sensual realm, in the luminous form, and in the formless realm. But how is the rebirth into a new state of existence in the future? It's because of sentient beings, shrouded by ignorance and fettered by craving, taking pleasure wherever it lands. That's how there is a new rebirth in a new state of existence. So this is very deep. How we are continuously reborn is because we continuously seek pleasure. We continuously add fuel of craving to the fire that we are, the karmic force that is there in us. That continues and we take birth, right? Because continuing to crave, right? So what we have to do, friends, is that we have to just let go of craving for form, feelings, perceptions, choices, consciousness. For the five aggregates, all this craving that we have, we have to leave. But how is there no rebirth into a new state of existence? It's when the ignorance fades away. Friends, this ignorance has to fade away. That is the most important thing. Knowledge arises and craving ceases. That's how there is no rebirth into a new state of, exi of existence into the future. So we have to be so wise. I have do our practice in such a best way that we are able to let go of this ignorance. We do not find any pleasure in anything in this, in this samsara. We just live our life fully, mindfully, without attaching ourselves, without unconsciously, you know, attaching ourselves to anything, just being mindful. So, so just we are all making our efforts in this direction, right? Then it is like the first, second, third, fourth absorption that is explained. I will not go deep into this because that is a bit, very deep thing. It's a very big discourse. Okay, I, I think I'll rem limit myself. It's like some things are very, very deep. So explaining it in this discourse will be very, very kind of out of, you know, uh, uh, context if I make because it has to be understood in much, much detail. I will request that you please read this discourse at your end and you will get your own insights and do share your insights and reflections of the discourse in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya Namo.